Hello and welcome to Newsmakers on CHCH. I'm Louis Butko. Thank you for joining us today. And in case you missed the news, one of nature's most spectacular phenomenons will be happening in our region in just a few short weeks as on April 8th, a total solar eclipse will cross North America. And I have the perfect guest to tee it up for us, your favorite amateur astronomer, Mario Carr. Mario Carr with Hamilton Amateur Astronomers. Stay safe, everyone, and remember... You can catch him every sure Sunday on CHCH Evening night News night with his segment, The night, night, night Sky. In addition to his amateur astronomy, he's also a former journalist and longtime public relations professional, and I'm very pleased to have him in studio today. Mario Carr, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I have to admit that, you know, every... I do the show a few times a week, yeah, and you know, I'll tell somebody, oh yeah, you know, local MPPs coming on, uh, award two counselors coming on. I told them that Mario Carr was coming. It was the biggest celebrity I possibly uh, could have gotten. No, uh, really? absolutely. <laughs> uh, you've been part of the CHCH uh, evening news on Sunday nights with your segments. Those are all yeah for about four years. You you do that from home. Yeah, you you yeah, choose I, the I, topics. I, yeah. You send it in. Yeah. Um, how you've been doing that four years now. I've been doing it now for four years. And by the way, I make it all up. <laughs> uh, don't say that at the beginning of the interview, Mario. Say that at the end. And then I can, okay. now, I, now I don't trust a word you say. Uh, I know you you and Steve Ruddick are, are close friends, too. Yes, you guys yeah. are uh, a- amateur astronomers. Where yeah. the love of the skies, where'd that come from for you? That came from, well, my grandparents used to live in, in New Brunswick, in Minto, New Brunswick. And the first time I saw the night sky, I'm going up what they call the North Minto Hill, and we're going to the theater. And it's so dark in New Brunswick. And I go up there, and all of a sudden, the Milky Way is right there. Wow. This is in August, July, and that was incredible. That's when it all started. Then I started asking questions to my grandfather, asked questions to my mother. They told me all about the stars and the heavens. My grandfather was really in the nature, hunting and fishing and all that stuff. So. Really, astronomy is sort of like a naturalist of the night sky. Yeah. So it all began that way. And then I got my first telescope when I was about six years old. I was living on Hampton Heath Road in Burlington. And the first thing I saw was the planet Jupiter. Wow. Okay. You look at Jupiter and you can see its moons. And it looks like a miniature solar system. And at that point, I just got hooked. Yeah. Right. I said to myself, this is incredible. (laughs) Right. This is fantastic. Right. So I always wanted to become uh, an astronomer, but that never happened. (laughs) So I got into journalism and I wanted to become a science writer. And um, one thing led to another. Uh, I was living in Toronto at the time and I wanted to start promoting the uh, astronomy events through the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. And they didn't really have anyone to help them promote it. Mm-hmm. Nobody came out to their events. I started doing it. They got 3,000 people <laughs> out to one event. Okay? <laughs> wow. And they, even the president told me, he said, Mario, we love what you do, but stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> too many people. Yeah, too many people. We can't handle for that. the crowds, right? <laughs> uh, now you're part of the uh, Hamilton Amateur Astronomers. Yes. Uh, yes. That organization, about 1,000 strong on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, about 1,000 strong. They have about, uh, reaching about 200 members, mm-hmm. right? So before I started promoting the club, we had about 60 or 70 members. So the, mm. uh, it's, it's definitely grown. The other thing, too, is uh, we are now the largest independent astronomy group in Canada. Wow. Okay. The main one is the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. That's a big umbrella there across Canada. And then there's a few independent ones, and we are one of the independent ones that are pretty big. Uh, what 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 does this organization do? What do you, uh, as a, look, you look to the stars, we as look you to the say, star, yeah. uh, but what, what, what a typical meeting, uh, is there discussions about what you see? Are there thir- certain things you're looking at certain times? Just take us through a, a general meeting of the uh, yeah. Hamilton uh, amateur astronomers. Well, we're all basically nerds, right? <laughs> and we all love the night sky, right? We all love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what they, uh, what we do do normally at the meetings is that, uh, we have a, a speaker, and they talk about an event or they talk about their profession or what their specialty is in astronomy, 
right? Mm -hmm. Then after that, we have somebody talking about what's going to happen in the night sky for this month. Okay. Right? So that's basically what we do at these meetings. We also, uh, one of our mandates is to outreach. So we're we're supposed to do a lot of outreach in the Hamilton area, and that's what we're doing now. I would say uh, this show uh, maybe a little outreach. Uh, yeah, I, of yeah, course, exactly. I reached out to you, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna count that too. That's right. Too. Uh, let's talk about uh, the eclipse. How long how long has this been on your radar? About uh, ten years. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. So you've had April eighth, twenty twenty four, circled, circled on, on calendar, your calendar, right? and yeah. I can't wait. I'm just, you know, rubbing my hands and all this <laughs> other stuff. This is my first total lunar eclipse, uh, solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to a partial solar eclipse in on Pelee Island in twenty seventeen, mm -hmm. and I went there with friends of mine, Dave and Carol, and it's absolutely incredible. Uh, the difference between a partial and a solar eclipse. The, during a partial, only about, well, not the whole moon will cover the sun. Mm -hmm. But during a total, every the whole moon covers the sun so, uh, totally. Mm -hmm. And this is, like I said, this is a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-few-lifetime event yeah. in this region. Well, I would say it's a once-in-a-twice-lifetime event. Okay. Because the next event is going to be 2144. I don't know anyone who's going to live for 120 oh, years. Oh, come on, Mario. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so for this moment for you, I mean, this really is a like a passion project, this night sky. Yes. But to be yeah. able to do it, to be in the path of... of, of totality. Totality. Um, it, this, is, this is big because of the amount of people who are in that path, correct? Yes. This is the first time when there's going to be so many people in urban cities that are actually going to... It's going to be a live event going through a lot of urban cities. Mm -hmm. And so something like 44 million people are going to be watching this total solar eclipse. Yeah. That's incredible when you think about it. Absolutely. You know, most eclipses happen in, you know, uh, off areas, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe over the oceans. We get about three to five eclipses a year. And on the average... The average solar eclipse happens in the same area once every 375 years. Wow. Okay? Yeah. So that's why it's so precious. Why? That's why it's so special. Uh, this one also special uh, because of the totality duration, no? Yes. Because, and why is that? What What makes this one, sometimes it could be a few seconds yeah. of totality. Uh, we're going to get lucky in You're, this region, but just go. Just explain to us the totality duration and why this one's significant. Okay. Totality, the, the, there's a band of totality. It's about 115 miles across, right? We're basically on the edge of totality. Okay. So we're going to get about one minute and 50 seconds. Okay. Okay? Totality begins at 318. The sun starts to cross, uh, the moon starts to cross the sun at 203. Okay. Okay? Then at 318, that's when totality starts. Then the whole thing ends about 431. Yeah. Okay? So... Us astronomers have been looking forward to this, obviously. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. We get about a minute and 50 seconds, whereas Niagara Falls, they're closer to the center of totality. Center of totality is uh, uh, probably in the States, probably around Buffalo. Okay. Niagara Falls is going to be, be about three minutes and 31 seconds. So it's a little bit longer than your normal if wow. there's a normal yeah. <laughs> total, total solar eclipse, right? <laughs> if there's a normal one, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, how would we know? How would um, we know? There are things that I've, I've realized, like, um, you know, NASA's wants, uh, you know, amateurs yes. to sort of notice things that are happening. Watch your pet, see what happens. Yes. Because there's a lot of things to study in these one minute and 50 seconds here in Hamilton because yeah. this, this doesn't happen too often. What, what are, what are well, some things that, I mean, other than the actual eclipse itself, what are some things that people at home can be kind of watching for? This is going to be really cool. Okay. This event, I want, everyone should be watching it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's going to happen is as soon as the, the sky gets dark at 318, You'll, you'll probably be able to see some stars hmm. at night uh, during the day. Yeah. How many times do you get to see that, right? And you'll be also be able to see the planet Jupiter just on the upper left and the planet Venus on the lower right. Okay. okay? And if we're lucky, if and only if we're lucky, right between Jupiter and the sun, we might be able to see a comet. Wow. Yeah. 
Comet 12P Ponds Brooks. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. which will be really cool. That would see. be just that. And so, what that depends on just visibility in the day sky or? On the would... visibility, but comets are really unpredictable. Okay. Okay. Sometimes they, they're duds. Yeah. Right? Sometimes they're really great. Yeah. Right. Most of the times they, they are duds. Yeah. Right. That's astronomy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's always weather dependent. Yeah. Okay. We've all, at our club, we've had the Perseids meteor shower at Binbrook Conservation Area. And I would say, 70% of the time, it's a washout because okay. it's cloud, wow. right? So that's the way yeah. astronomy is. Right? How, how much are you, you're watching the sky? How much are you uh, counting on uh, Steve Ruddick and uh, Shelley Marriage's forecast uh, over the next week and a half? You got your own separate machine that, uh, <laughs> that's kind of watching where the clouds are coming from there, Mario? Well, yeah, yeah, I do. No, I, <laughs> I believe but it. But you know the forecast is only good to 24 hours, okay. right? Yeah. So now they're predicting something like uh, – only it's only going to be 20 percent clear mm. i don't have too much credence on that okay right? so really guys wait until <laughs> it's closer right uh you've brought a couple of these glass a couple yes. pairs of these glasses yes. um these are i don't want to say important these are imperative imperative if you plan on watching the why why are these so important yeah. uh for the you, eclipse. you do not want uh, let me repeat you do not want to look at the sun directly if you do you you will burn out your eyeballs, right? Yeah. You don't want to do that. No. Right? What? So what do these glasses do? What What are they providing well, in terms? Because I can't see anything you right can't now. Can't see so anything. I'm but, saying... but if you look at that one uh, light up there, you might yeah. be able to see something. Do you see something? I see something. Yeah. yeah. So I see a little square. Yeah. So they're okay. cutting out most of the radiation that's going to harm your eyes. So this is how bright that's going to be because well, with the sun, with the moon blocking the sun, it's that bright. Because like I say, I'm looking at the lights, which are pretty bright here in the studio. Well, that's nothing compared to the sun, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not compared to the sun um, because it's super important. Because you're saying you will burn your eye if you are doing. You will burn your eye. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so these are super important. Uh, so these are super important. They have to be approved by um, uh, the ISO. Mm -hmm. And um, these are but from McMaster University. Believe it or not, McMaster University got rid of 650,000 <laughs> of these viewers, yeah. right? In, uh, what, about a month? Yeah. Which is incredible. Um, right? uh, depending on where you are, I know some areas have uh, their local libraries are still giving them away in some places, but th well, it's important. Do not, do, do not. Do not. We look cannot the stress that enough. Yeah, you do not look at the sun with your sunglasses. Uh, take special care. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, the only time you can look at it is during totality, when the moon is over the sun completely. Mm -hmm. But once that moon starts moving and there's a little bit of sun, the fraction do, of a the second. fraction of a second, do not take a chance yeah. with your eyes. It's it's just not worth it. Um, and speaking of your eyes, also important. I know we here at CH we've bought in special filters similar to these oh, for your to go on cameras. Oh, excellent! Yes, because you should also not be. You have the possibility of damaging your camera, right? Big as time. Well, if you're taking pictures of these, big time. Yeah. you got to watch it with all your astronomical equipment, cameras, whatever you have. Right? Yeah. You want to be careful. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, this is this is going to be really exciting. And I, I do want to let people know, you're actually going to be part of our coverage here at CHCA yeah, on Eclipse Day. I'm going to be down at Niagara Falls. Yeah. Table Rock. Yep. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So right? are we. <laughs> so are we. That was but a... I'm not looking forward to the traffic. <laughs> it's one million people. <laughs> yes, that's what they're saying. This could be the, the biggest tourist event ever in Niagara Falls. And that's saying something because the falls are, are pretty nice to look at, too. But oh, I think uh, that between the, the falls and I'm really looking forward to being down there as well. I will let our listeners, our viewers know it. CHCH is going all out for Eclipse coverage. Uh, we'll have coverage on Morning Live. Uh, we'll be going live at 3 o'clock with the special programming uh, and uh, 6 o'clock, of course, to recap the whole day. And like I said, I'm, I'm very look, very much looking forward to being in Niagara Falls, a place, you know, 30 minutes down the road from where I grew up uh, to oh, get excellent. to see this once-in-a-lifetime um, event. Uh, let's look to the skies a little bit more. Other than the eclipse, what are you looking for? Uh, as, as the season turns to spring, someone was telling me the constellations actually shift. They do. So that what what's coming back? What's going away? What should we be looking at the skies well, for? You're going to be looking at more springtime constellations like Leo, okay. right? And springtime is definitely at the season of... 
galaxies. Okay. Right? So there's a lot of galaxies that you can see in the uh, sky at that time. Um, this time, I know sometimes in Burlington and Hamilton, um, Niagara, Toronto, light pollution is, is a real thing, right? Yes, That's, Light pollution a is thing. a real thing. You know, you'll go to the cottage, you'll go a few hours up north, um, it, it, that's the one thing with me is every time I go to, to my cottage or somebody's cottage, the, the one thing you say is, look at all the stars. Yes. How do you combat you? How do amateur astronomers combat light pollution? Are there particular spots in the region that are, that are better? Like how, because it, it does, it does sometimes put a no yeah. pun intended, put a damper on what you're seeing up there. Oh, it does big time. And, um, so what a lot we at the club, our area, our observing site is the Vinbrook Conservation Area. Okay. It used to be really good, mm. but now with all the building in Binbrook, it's not as great as it used to be. Yeah. Right? So that's the unfortunate part of of uh, when we yeah, build up. Yeah, looking to the new, skies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, too, um, what I like to do is I like to observe early in the morning. Hmm. Because I find there's less light pollution. There's okay. less, less people on the road. Maybe some lights are off, right? Mm -hmm. And also, too, the best things to see, in my opinion, are things that are close to the Earth, like the moon. I love, I can observe the moon for hours through my telescope. Yeah. I've been doing that since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel, you put on high power and you feel like you're jumping around in the moon, right? <laughs> and it's just great to see. And also Jupiter. And all the planets, they're so bright, you can really see them from your backyard, yeah. right? So there's a few things that you can see as well. And also there's uh, light filters that you can use on your uh, uh, telescopes as well. So somebody is going to see the eclipse, and I, I, more than a few people are just going to be blown away by the the significance of it, right? We're, yeah. we're just, we're so little, and I think that's that's what people, that's what scares people when they look to the it's skies, true. right? It's true. It, we are nothing. <laughs> the little insignificance of what we are in the galaxy and things like that, but if someone catches the bug, somebody looks to the skies, they see a comet, they see Jupiter, they, they see this, this natural phenomenon in front of them where would they go after april 8th to continue to build how would you encourage them maybe they don't have money for uh, a telescope right now maybe it's something that they can start what is something that you would do to help encourage more people to look to the skies well they can come out to our club mm -hmm. okay our no. club is a great resource and we also have a uh, lender scope program so people without telescopes can actually use um, our scopes, oh, and, cool. and we can sign it out. It's like a library, is yeah. right? And there's also a library of books, too, right? Yeah. So if people are interested, they want more information, come on out. Uh, it's the second Friday of every month at St. Matthew's Church on Plains Road in Burlington. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, one more thing I wanted Absolutely. to mention Go about for the it. eclipse yep. is that there's the corona around the sun mm -hmm. is going to be bigger this year than normal because there's a lot of action happening on the sun. Okay. Okay. So during the eclipse, you'll be able to see streamers. It's the outer atmosphere really? of the sun. So that's another cool thing to look out for. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool things to yeah. look out for. And uh, I knew I was going to be in a good spot uh, being in Niagara Falls. Now I know I'm going to have the right person beside me <laughs> to explain it all to me. Uh, Mario, thank you for making the time. Thank you for bringing these because uh, well, you saved welcome. me a trip uh, next week of trying to find the last few pairs. I don't here. know where you would have got them, honestly, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, but thank you so much for your insights, Mario. I well, really appreciate welcome. it. Well, thank you. Uh, and every Sunday we can catch you here on uh, CHC yeah. Evening News. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Awesome. Okay. Mario, thanks so Thank much. you very much. All right, my thanks to Mario for joining me today, and my thanks to you as well, because we could not do the show out without your support. Make sure you like and subscribe to CHCH Podcast so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you, including a brand new episode of Sportsline with Bubba O'Neill that you can find right now wherever you found this show. One more time, thank you, Mario, for joining me. Thank you, Mike Corston and Chantel Grillo in the control room, and to everybody else from all of us here at CHCH, I'm Louis Buck. Go. Have a great day. Hello, everyone. My name is Mario Carr with Hamilton Amateur Astronomers. Stay safe, everyone, and remember, make sure you take...